So folks, here it is, Hoka's most expensive running shoe. And it's not even what I would consider a marathon super shoe. Let's talk about my initial impressions of the Hoka Bondi X. Welcome back to the channel, folks. If this is your first time here, my name is Brendan, and I'm a Halifax, Nova Scotia-based runner who's lost over 150 pounds through the power of running and habit change. On this channel, we talk about strategies and tools to help us become faster runners and be healthier, whatever that means for you. It could be to lose weight, could be to run faster, whatever you want. This is what we're gonna talk about on the channel. Now, let's talk about the Hoka Bond IX. And just so you know, I did buy the shoe with my own cold hard earned Canadian monopoly money. No one is gonna tell me what to say about the shoe, especially because this is a very expensive shoe and I'm gonna be extremely harsh on it because of the price. Now let's get into the upper. So the upper on the Bond IX is a mesh-like material and honestly, I had to be upfront with you guys. I'm just not getting along with it so far. I've done four, four, yeah, four runs in this shoe so far and I just, there's a couple of things that really annoy me, but let's start with the things that I like because I don't want to start off being a negative Brendan, okay? So a couple of things that I really do enjoy about this upper. So this thing has a gusted tongue, which means that the midfoot lockdown is actually spectacular. And another thing that we want in our long run shoes and any shoe for me really, cause I don't like a big scrunched up toe box. This has a nice accommodating wide toe box. And folks, the pull tab on this thing is exactly what a pull tab should be. It shouldn't be anything like it's on the, especially not the endorphin speed, that pull tab on the endorphin speed, no. The pull tab on the Bond X, that is money. But unfortunately, that's kind of where my likes stop and where the negatives start to creep in. And like I said, the midfoot lockdown is pretty good thanks to that gusseted tongue, but folks, the lockdown through the heel and the lockdown, just overall lockdown is kind of sloppy. Now, I don't exactly know why. I did go true to size in this thing and I don't think that I, if I went down half a size that it would make a big difference. And if I went down a full size, well, my foot just wouldn't fit in the shoe. So I'm not entirely sure what the deal is with the lockdown. I've tried lacing it up a bunch of different ways and that hasn't helped either. So I'm really hoping that over time I'll develop a strategy to get a good lockdown in this thing, but the heel lockdown especially just isn't working for me right now. It's kind of unfortunate because that gusset tongue in the midfoot keeps me locked down kind of like right in this midfoot section, but right back here is very sloppy and kind of even down in the toe box, like I said, there's a lot of room. So it also just, I, I, there's, I just can't get a good lockdown right now. And something that actually might be contributing to that bad lockdown is my biggest dislike about this shoe. And that is the tongue length is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't quite understand what the point of this tongue design is. Hoka, please, if someone from Hoka is watching this video, why not just make the tongue like a, a centimeter longer? That's all I'm asking. Because when I'm lacing up the shoe using the runner's knot, my foot is being torn apart by the laces. That's, a, that's dramatized. But the laces are sitting on the top of my tongue and that is very uncomfortable and very annoying. So. I'm getting fired up about this because it's just so annoying how small, how short this tongue is. So those two things are making the upper very annoying right now. And my hopes, my really big hope is that I'll be able to find a good way to lock this shoe down, but there's nothing I can do about the tongue. There's literally nothing I can do about the tongue. So hopefully Hoka will work on that in the Bondi X number two, if that's something that they're gonna work on. But for right now, I just gotta work with what I have and try to get a good lockdown, maybe switch out the laces. I don't know, we'll see. If you have any suggestions on how I can get a better lockdown, please leave them in the comment section down below. So those are my thoughts on the upper, but how does this big old thick boy midsole feel underfoot? And right off the bat, you might be looking at the shoe and think, wow, I'm gonna sink right into that. I'm gonna feel super squishy and all that stuff but that's not the case in this shoe. There is a little bit of compression, of course. Look at the amount of foam here, and the foam is relatively soft, but thanks to that carbon fiber plate, you're not sinking right into the foam. It's nothing like, oh, I don't have it down here. Oh yeah, the Clifton 7. The Clifton 7, it feels like you're kind of just sinking into the foam and you're not getting anything back. Like it's kind of just dead foam. But the compression molded EVA with that carbon fiber plate does not feel like that at all. You're not sinking directly into the midsole. You're kind of just getting a nice compression and then the carbon fiber plate is just lifting you back up a little bit. It doesn't feel super bouncy. That's not what I'm getting in this shoe at all. When I'm out there running, the best way I can describe the sensation of the foam and plate combo is 
very smooth. The plate, it doesn't really act as a spring. What I think the plate's being used for in this shoe is for that structure to give that early stage meta rocker its shape. Because without it, this foam would just feel like dead foam like I'm getting in the Clifton 7. This shoe feels exceptionally smooth thanks to that early stage meta rocker, but folks, it's not a shoe that I'm gonna bring out there for my tempo days. It's not a shoe that I felt like I could get up to those faster paces and sustain quite easily. I have better shoes for the job. But when I was going out there for those marathon paces, what I would consider my marathon pace, or my daily training paces, this shoe, when I got up to those paces, made it super nice to stay at that cruising pace. It's kind of like a set it and forget it, like cruise control. That's how smooth this shoe feels. Of course, you're still putting in the work and your heart's working and your legs are working, but this shoe with the smoothness just helps you get there and help you stay there. And like I alluded to earlier, what it feels like is a higher stack Rocket X. And by higher stack, I mean much higher stack. Now the Rocket X wasn't my favorite shoe because of that lower stack. However, the Bondi X with that little bit of a higher stack height and a little bit more of a accommodating fit for me personally, I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Like I said, it's not a sensation like I get in the mar super marathon racing shoes. One thing that this shoe has that those marathon racing shoes doesn't have is a extremely wide base. And someone like me, just a noob everyday runner who over just slightly, having that wider base makes the shoe much more accommodating and much more comfortable for my longer everyday runs. And honestly, this might be a shoe that I would opt for for a marathon when that day comes. We'll have to see, but folks, I'm really enjoying what they did with this midsole here. The compression mold at EVA mixed that carbon fiber plate. It is very smooth and it is very fun to run in. It's not a shoe that I'm gonna to take to the track. It's not a shoe I'm gonna take for tempo days. This is a shoe that I would consider for a daily trainer, if I'm being completely honest. And those longer run at marathon or maybe even half marathon paces. This is where this midsole would work best for me. Now we're gonna talk about the outsole. And typically, I don't talk about the outsoles that much, but with this one, there's a couple of things that annoyed me, once again. But I just wanna start off by saying that the traction, not an issue at all. I took it out on a rainy day, no issue at all. But what is an issue is, you see here how they have like a window into the carbon fiber plate? Well, that picks up rocks, and I noticed that I have two rocks just stuck right in there right now. now because of the high stack height, it didn't really make a difference. I didn't feel those rocks when I was out there running, but it's just kind of an annoyance. And if I got a big enough rock stuck in there, it could potentially make the EVA just kind of, I don't know, degrade quicker potentially. I don't know, but it's just, why? Why have that window? Are you have, do you have to prove that there's a carbon fiber plate in there? I can't really bend it or twist it. So that proves to me there's a carbon fiber plate. Thanks for showing it off, but all it is is doing, all it's doing is getting rock stuck in there. Come on. And unfortunately, folks, this is where this video gets really dark and scary. Hoka, why? Why? Why would you do that to us consumers that just wanna buy a nice running shoe for us to go out there and look fancy in front of our fiancés and significant others and whatever we may have? Look nice in front of our friends. Why? Why would you do this? You price this shoe at 200 US dollars 240 Canadian dollars, for what reason? For a little bit more money in your pocket? It's just unacceptable. I just don't understand why they would price this shoe at this point. Even the Rocket X, what is meant to be their marathon super racing shoe, the Carbon X2, another example of their super marathon racing shoes are cheaper than this shoe, which is what I would consider this shoe to be a daily trainer or a marathon racing shoe for the everyday runner. And the everyday runner, it's gonna be scared to buy this shoe that is 240 Canadians or 200 US dollars. In the sock liner here, it says everyone can level up. Everyone with 240 Canadian dollars to spend on a running shoe can level up, you mean. That is just unacceptable. The pricing in this shoe is just completely outrageous. The maximum this shoe should be is 180 US dollars, if that. Just, come on guys. This, the pricing of running shoes is getting insane. And the last question is, is this shoe gonna be going into my rotation? Yes, it is gonna be going into my rotation. I'm gonna be using it for my daily training runs if you can believe that. Yeah, a 240 Canadian dollar daily trainer, I'm insane. 
but I do really enjoy the sensation underfoot. And I will potentially consider using it if I ever do a marathon in the near future. If I do a marathon next year, there's probably gonna be different shoes. But right now, I do believe that this shoe, it's very fun to run in. And if you have a bunch of money just burning in your pocket, Go pick it up, I think you might enjoy it. If you're someone that likes a wider landing platform and a shoe that isn't extremely soft, but has a little bit of, has a little bit of compression for you. It will protect your legs when you're out there running. And isn't that the point of running shoes? To protect your legs when you're out there running so they feel a little bit better at the end of the run? And this shoe does it, it does it for me anyway. So folks, let me know, have you picked up the Hoka Bond AX or were you thinking about picking it up and, and my initial review kind of swayed you one way or the other? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've made it this far in the video, please hit that like button down below. It really means a lot. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We're building something great here. All right, talk to you later. Have a great evening.